Hi everyone, welcome back to my shop. You're probably wondering what the heck has this guy been doing for the last couple months? Well, to tell you, I've been very ill since, well, since I started on the wings of this, I've started feeling not very well. And it got worse and worse and worse. Uh, three trips to the hospital, uh, lost my voice, couldn't breathe, no COVID or nothing like that. It's just an infection of some kind. They pumped me full of meds. Uh, and finally, it was about well, the first week of January, I started feeling better and now I'm off the meds and I'm doing good. So that's that, that's where I was. Um, couldn't work with anything that had made fumes or dust or go out in the cold or anything like that. Um, another thing I wanna talk about real quick, to talk about real quick, um, is the messages you send me on uh, YouTube. I missed a few questions and I didn't realize I did, and I apologize for that. And uh, I try to answer them as, as they come in, and my phone was not working so great, evidently, because I never saw a lot of them. Now I have a new phone and another setback as far as finances go, but that's the way it is. Um, and all the videos that I've shot from the beginning of the my channel, everything, um, up till the part one of the Phoenix wing uh, assembly is lost. I had a hard drive crash when I fired up my computer again. Um, just gobs of information. All the master recordings are have been wiped out. I can get them retrieved by a data company, but it cost me about 2000 bucks to do it. And I can't do it myself because it's specialty software. And so I said, the heck with it. For 2000 bucks, I'll buy me about three or four airplanes and have a good time. So finding out what I said and what I did, uh, I have to go to the same source as you. I have to go onto YouTube and look at my videos and just to let you know that things are gonna be a little, maybe a little off, hopefully not. So let's get started here. Uh, the first thing they say they want us to do is to what they call a bomb, but is a drop tank. They want to install this first. And it comes with, uh, let me see what kind of size screws these are. Four millimeter by 20 cap screws, a four millimeter lock washer, they call it a spring washer, and a four millimeter flat washer. There's two of each in here. And they go through the bottom of the fuselage let me see if I can get this. My monitor is really small, so I can't see what I'm doing. And I'll, I'll just take a snapshot and put it on there. But uh, there's two screws here. Uh, I keep pointing to the wrong thing. Down here, there's two screws that go through here. Two screw holes, I'm sorry. They go through here. You need to pop the covering material on the bottom, put the screws through, screw the bottom of, uh, screw the tank onto the bottom of the fuselage and you're good to go. The next thing they want you to do is to install the wing. And there's two options of doing that. Uh, there's a set of thumb screws right here that go through the side of the fuselage, which is here and here. That's where the thumb screws go, inside out, and they draw the wing up tight. So there's two options you can do. You can use the what they are is four cap screws or the four thumb screws to hold the wings on. Um, the cap screws fit into that white or that metal fork that we installed into the wings that slide into the fuselage. And they go, let me see, I'm looking at the monitor, I really can't see nothing. And they go here. There's two of them go here and two on the bottom side. And, well, left and right side. And, uh, they just screw straight down. You slide the wing in, lock them down, holds it in place. On the original, that's all you had was the, the two cap screws per side. And I noticed that on mine, the wings would rock a little bit. So the thumb screws might be a better way to go. Um, additionally, on the thumb screws, I don't trust nylon screws to, as a mounting of any type of wing on a large plane. Uh, so. What I'm gonna do is go to the hardware store and buy some bolts and I'll use the bolt, uh, metal bolts for that. 
and another thing I wanted to mention I think I mentioned this before on the review but where the bolts mount right here they've cut lightning holes around it so this is really weak I mean you could push on it and it flexes a lot so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double it up on the back side with basswood all, on all four mounting screws where they go and uh, it'll fix that problem because I don't like any kind of flexing where there's a mounting surface you know um, if you're wing mounted on the top of your plane and you put bolts down through there you wouldn't want the plate that the bolts to to do this okay and that's what these are doing so then I'm just gonna back them up uh, with some you, you can use light ply um, use light ply or in my case I have basswood laying around so I'm gonna use basswood okay what they want us to do after that is mount the wing um, I'm not gonna mount the wing here's the tube uh, I'm not gonna mount it yet number one it's gonna get in the way when the wings are mounted to when we put the stab on which is the third step is to mount the stab because uh, when you start cutting the holes out you'll want to use a an iron to reseal and lap into the fuselage a little bit the covering material and that'll be kind of difficult when the wings are on and it's sitting rigid like this okay it's easier to rock it back and forth and uh, after that's done then I'll install the wings and get ready to glue it in with some 30 minute epoxy and do the alignment and all that stuff so with that said I'm going to get everything rearranged get ready to mount the stab and uh, we'll go from there I moved the camera in a little closer so you can see what I'm gonna do here and what I did already was put marks on each corner of the slot and a mark on the center line so basically what I'm gonna do is slice it down the center and triangular uh, little triangle cuts here little triangular shape on both sides and then fold it in seal it on the inside and uh, trim off the excess that I don't want because it's just gonna have to be a very slim slight overlap on the inside so I'm going to grab my ruler here this is very awkward because I have to work around the camera and it's not cooperating very well uh, okay we'll start about here and just zip it on up to the other mark right about there my triangular cut start from the corner if I can find it Something like that. And there is the opening. Now I'm going to take a trim tool. Since I'm working around the camera, this is going to be awkward. I'm just going to start on the very edge here. And, and make the corner like that just to highlight it basically now I'll lay it down with a flat edge part something like that front we go around the camera here get the back okay I'm probably reaching in front of you aren't I okay here we go start the crease then seal it down I'm not sealing it down very good just enough to keep it lapped over so I can make my cut okay now I'm gonna 
trim off the excess on the inside. I'm just basically going to freehand it. About a sixteenth of an inch, give or take, uh, on the inside edge. Just like that. A little bit more here. That's it. And I'm going to do the same to the other side. So I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll slide the stabilizer through. I just took the stabilizer and slid it in the slot so you can see that it's in there. I haven't measured it out yet. It, I just shoved it in and uh, it went in quite hard. It was very hard to get it through that slot. It was very tight. So I was a little surprised, but that's a good surprise. What I need to do is uh, measure the back of the stabilizer from the side of the fuselage out to get a, a general place of center. So uh, let me do that real quick. And uh, let's see. We have 13 and let's see. 13 and 11 eighths, or 11 sixteenths. 13 and 11 sixteenths. Check this one. Thirteen and eleven sixteenths. What do you know? Accidents happen. Thirteen and eleven sixteenths. Thirteen and eleven sixteenths. So I guess I'm on center. That is unusual for me. I'm usually way off, but today not. Not so much. What I need is a felt pen. And what I'm going to do is mark the rear of the stab where it's centered. So I'll always know when I'm in line. Just on the back here, just a little bit of a dot. You might not be able to see it, but I can. And then as long as those two dots are, are visible, I can adjust my stabilizer and uh, prepare it to be uh, cut uh, the covering cut so it's probably gonna have to be wiggled left and right a little bit so that's not a big deal I have to get the wings on so let me put the wings on I'll come back and we'll start measuring this out I got the wing mounted I've already squared up my stabilizer uh, just to review I measured in from the corner of the horizontal stabilizer to the fuselage on both sides to center up the stabilizer. Then I measured from the horizontal stabilizer to the top of the vertical stabilizer to make sure it's square. And if it's not square, this is the time to take care of that problem. The next measurement I made was from the corner of the aileron cutout right here to the corner of the horizontal stabilizer on both sides. Measured that and I used a aluminum ruler and it came out to the 41 and a 16th inch on this plane. I'm sure every plane is going to be a little different. And uh, once I got that squared up, I used a Sharpie and I marked on the covering on both sides of the stabilizer, top and bottom. And that gives me an alignment where to start when I, once I put it back in with, with the epoxy on it. You're going to say, well, a sharpie that's awful hard to get off and it can be if you don't have the right solvent and in this case we'll be I'll be attaching the horizontal stabilizer with 30 minute epoxy and to clean up the 30 minute epoxy everybody knows you use denatured alcohol to clean that up and it just so happens that denatured alcohol takes off sharpies so that's why I use a sharpie uh, another thing you have to do is jack up the back of your plane, look at it on a head-on head view to make sure that your horizontal 
stabilizer is level with the wing. You'll see the wing and the horizontal stabilizer. That all should be squared up. And in the book they show you a top view and a front view and show you where to measure to make sure that's correct. And if it's not, more than likely your wings are not mounted straight on your fuselage or they did something that screwed it up in the manufacturing or your empennage behind the wing is warped or twisted. And if that's the case, you have to send your fuselage back to get a new one or whatever. But there's really no way to fix nothing like that unless you really want to cut the plane up. So that's that. Um, so I suppose now I need to take the horizontal stabilizer out, remove the wings and the fuselage off the bench so I have room to, to trim the center of the sta horizontal stabilizer, get the covering off. So give me a minute and I'll be right back. Well, I kind of went ahead and I, I cut the center section out, the covering material. And what I did is I just measured in an eighth of an inch from my lines. You can probably see the lines top and bottom, measured in an eighth of an inch, laid my ruler down, used a brand new sharp scalpel blade, made my cuts, peeled it off. That's really all there is to it. That's why I didn't bother to show it. It's basic, simple stuff. So uh, what I'm going to do is take my iron and seal this down on the inside before I slide this into the fuselage and then it'll be ready to go. I'll get my 30 minute epoxy out put the fuselage back up here and get ready to slide this in permanently. Back in a minute. Quick story. I put the plane on the table, went over to my paint locker where I store my glue. No 30 minute epoxy. <laughs> Came over to the table, got five minute, got 15 minute, no 30 minute epoxy. So I went to my order list and at the top of the list, right at the very top, 30 minute epoxy. So I was desperate and the wife and I, we hopped in the car. We ended up driving 50 miles one way to find some 30 minute epoxy and I finally ended up with some. So it was a 100 mile round trip for this little tube of 30 minute epoxy. Uh, this is a Permatex brand, I've used it before. It works well, it's just not a lot. When I buy 30 minute epoxy or any epoxy, I get like four and a half ounce bottles at a time and uh, well that's that that's the epoxy I'm going to be using so onward on the fuselage here I have paper towels for cleanup right here I have denatured alcohol that's for cleanup measuring cup I'm going to mix approximately 5 cc you know with something like this you don't have to measure how many cc but that's just to give you an idea how much I'm gonna to mix to do this job. It's probably more than I need, but that'll work. Mixing stick. This is a metal one. You can buy this at on eBay or uh, Hobby Lobby. I've seen them there in the little model section. They got, they got some of these, different shapes too. Um, this is a little cake decorating spatula, spreader, whatever you wanna call it. I use this to put thin layers down of epoxy on surfaces like inside the fuselage and on the stabilizer. So I guess I'm going to change the camera angle, zoom into the tail section here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to mix the epoxy off screen because that's not a big deal. You've all done it before. So uh, give me a minute and I'll be back.
Okay, we're ready to slide it in. It's all sealed up inside and out. A few slides are done. Now to make the mess. And just about there. And before I go too far, I'm going to clean up the excess and uh, then get out the ruler and start measuring before it uh, starts to cure. So if I don't talk much, it's because I'm kind of in a hurry. <laughs> I gotta clean up this mess before it gets too big. All right, now I need to measure it up. I've gone as far as I can for today. Horizontal stabilizers in, you've seen Pretty much all that is just mainly gluing sliding it in wiping it up measuring it out and that's pretty much it so until that gets dry uh, it's gonna be a blink of an eye for you but tomorrow for me the next step will be putting on looks like the elevators and then the horn on the rudder and what's after that I can hold on to the booklet here and it looks like mounting the rudder so give me a moment and I'll be right back I went ahead and mounted one elevator already it's all glued in um, I did have a problem though and that was I ran out of thin CA so what I did was I used medium CA which doesn't wick in as well as thin CA so what I did is I rubbed it on the hinge, slid it into the slot, and did the same thing to the elevator. But it was a, a one-shot deal. So I made sure I practiced that a few times before I actually went ahead and did it. So I don't recommend doing it that way. Uh, use the thin CA. Stick, it in the, stick the nozzle in the slot right here once it's in place. And glue them in the proper way. Um, I don't want you to get into get into any bad habits so i'm not going to show the way i do it it's uh it's not a good way to do it because if you use the medium and you have a hard time getting it into place you might get it like halfway into place and then it'll set up and you're stuck then you end up having to cut them all out and that's no fun so i rec recommend doing it with a thin ca do it right and uh get it done that way so i'm going to break away i'm going to do it the hard way I don't want you to see that because it could be a mess. <laughs> if I have a problem, then uh, I'd rather have it off camera, and I'll tell you about it if I do. So uh, give me a minute. I'm going to attach the elevator, and then we'll move on to the rudder, the hinges, and finish that up. Finish up with the elevators. They're done. Hinges are all glued in. Nothing majorly ugly to report on, on my uh, crude... Uh, installation so we're on to the vertical stabilizer the rudder and the hinges here and let's talk about the hinges first and pull these out on the cougar build i showed um, a little bit about lubricating hinges and uh, we'll get to that in a minute but on these uh, hinges they give you they're assembled with a screw that goes in through and uh, on some of mine they were a little tight so they were hard to move so I ended up having to loosen them. I'm 
not going to do much else to it because they're they're pretty well in there. I thought about putting a little drop of CA on the threads just to make sure they don't back out, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. So that is that. Another thing you have to look for on these little hinges is there's flashing along here, and I take a knife. I left one on here, and you can barely see it, but there's a little flashing on here. You might want to take that off because it makes it uh, a little harder to shove into the the hole they have for the hinges and just kind of just lightly take it off with a knife just kind of scrape them off and the next thing I want to talk about is lubricating the hinges what I like to use is some petroleum jelly just smear it on the hinges a little bit on both sides then take a lighter and warm it up and the petroleum jelly will liquefy and it'll go inside the hinges so when you use your epoxy, your hinges won't stick, okay? You don't want them to get glued together. So uh, give me a second, and I'm going to go grab some of my petroleum jelly and smear one up and show you how it's done. Here we go. Got my petroleum jelly. Just the cheapest thing I could find, actually. It's been around my shop for a long time. And what you do is I use a toothpick, and I'll... Uh, Take a little glob and put it right, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's kind of small. And I pack it into the joint. Try not to go too heavy on it. And just smear it around. Any part of the hinge that you see that moves and there's a crease there and an opening, pack that opening so that the epoxy or whatever glue you decide to use doesn't seep into the joint the movable part of the joint and once you do that I would kinda like wiping off the excess and make sure I pack it real good like I said don't put it on too heavy just enough to to fill those little creases then you take your lighter and just do this real quick It'll liquefy with that quick and I set it on a paper towel and I'll roll it and get all the excess off that I don't want that's on the surface and that's really all there is to it okay get that out of the way now what I'm going to do is mix up some epoxy and uh, put a light coat of epoxy on the hinge itself on the stem and more into the holes here not real heavy and then put the hinges in I'm gonna do all of them at once that's the beauty of having something covering up your hinges so let me mix the epoxy and I'll be right back and we'll start sticking this thing on here all right what I'm gonna do is just kind of drip it into the hole here and I'll use this thinner side and I can pack it a little bit better onto the edges of the hole on the inside. I'll try it this way. A little more efficient. And I have my denatured alcohol over here so I can wipe up any kind of little mistakes I've made, little droplets or whatever of epoxy. And this is 30 minutes, so it's going to take a while to dry, so I've got plenty of time to work it in. And that's all I'm going to do. Slowly work it in. If you put too much on there, it's just going to keep draining into the hole and dripping back onto your covering material on the inside. So. Don't know what I'm doing here. Looking for things that aren't there. And uh, that's just about it right there. Not much more to it. I'm going to add a little more to the top one because I don't believe I have enough in there. There we go. I'm gonna set that down. And a light coat of epoxy on each one of these. Don't need a lot. Just like that. I mean, it's just enough to gloss it up. 
slide them in. I usually put the heads of the screw towards the top here. Another thing I did, you probably didn't notice, but I gouged out a little bit more of the hole so the hinge will recess in there halfway. It's about halfway through the screw. And I did the same to the vertical stab so that when I shove it on, there's not going to be a real big gap there. If you put too much on the hinge itself, it will push back up and cover the hinge and that's something you don't want. And I got a little bit more than I want on here, so I'm going to scrape some off. It's like that. I might have to mix up just a little bit more epoxy than I thought. I didn't measure it or anything, I just gave, gave it a squirt into the medicine cup and hope for the best. <laughs> one last one. Okay. All the screw heads are facing up. What I have to do is grab a paper towel here, get some denatured alcohol, and do a little bit of cleanup on this rudder. There we go. Okay, now we have to put on the rudder horn. Have to make sure it's on the correct side, which is this side over here. Goes in here, so I'm gonna have to cut away some of this covering material. And they got a good chunk of covering on here. I'm not really sure how far this has to go in there. Looks like all the way across, perhaps. So I'll cut that out. And uh, hope for the best here. They say to cut it all the way off, so that's what I'm going to do. Make sure I got everything correct. Okay, that rudder horn slides on there like that, and it has to be sticking out how far. Okay, I need to do a little explaining on the adjustment of the rudder control horn. This is a kind of crude drawing of the rudder, but this is the leading edge of the rudder. There's uh, the opening. This is the control horn, and you can see it's positioned as far to the, to the port side as I can get it without coming out away from the the base of it coming out away from the edge of the rudder and that is the horizontal alignment okay there's also a vertical alignment and I will show you another drawing for that this is kind of a side fuselage drawing you can see where the stabilizer sits and the rudder the, whole, the vertical stabilizer and right here is where the control rod comes out and it comes to the control horn the adjustment is vertical now on the control horn to find the center of the rod in the bell or in the control horn here so the rod you open up the side of the fuselage where the rod comes out slide the control rod in and let it sit there and adjust the height of your control horn so that the rod sits in between the two ears. Now if you don't do that you, you may get a bind on the on the ball link that you install. Now you can see how the rod runs through the center of the horn. That's why I say to put the hinges on, don't glue them, slide your rudder on, 
Open up the hole inside of your fuselage, slide your rod in, then find the center of your control horn, and then mark the center, or mark where it sits in the center, on your rudder with the felt pen or a pencil. Then put your control horn on your rudder, and then slide it all back together again, test your, test the alignment, and you should be good. Because if you have it too far up or too far down or crooked, you're going to get a bind on this ball link. Okay, that's in there. Looks pretty straight. And I'm going to start putting some into the vertical stabilizer. Use up as much as I got. I'm going to have to mix a little bit more. Well, it's only going to have to be a drip more. <laughs> it's going to be close. might have enough just might have enough I guess we'll find out here in a minute just about got it last hole all right what I have to do is put some on the hinges themselves it looks like there's plenty to do that because you don't need much on the hinge. And I don't smear the epoxy all the way up to here. I only put it on this little bit on the end, the last two rungs, I guess you could call it. There's uh, like two. Well, how many? One, two, three, four barbs on there. And I only go up a couple, halfway. That way, when I push the hinges in, the glue fills up behind the other barbs, and, and that's more than enough to fill that hole. Okay, there we go put this down and you might have noticed I didn't try to make the hinges straight <clears throat> excuse me I didn't try to make them straight because when I slide them into their holes here like that okay I'll put this a little bit more they're a little crooked I can feel they're crooked and what I do is I shove it all the way in move the rudder left and right and they'll self-center when you do that and you can see that it's a tight fit. I got plenty of movement. It bottoms out against the uh, vertical stabilizer. It doesn't bang against the elevators, but there's more than enough movement there. And the gap is nice and tight. And it doesn't look like I have any run over that's on my hinges, so I have to worry about that. I'm just going to let that sit there and dry, and uh, that's really about it for the rudder. I was going to jump right into putting the horns and linkages on the elevator, but I decided to, uh, just for fun, off camera, check the fit of my tail wheel into the, into the slot. Well, I ran across a problem. And I guess I'm going to tackle this first before I go into uh, the elevators and how to make the put together the ball joints and stuff. That's pretty simple stuff, anyways. But check this out. They say to take your your retract, slide it in. It's not too hard to get to that point, but I get to there, and it won't go any further. And it has another inch to go or more. Let me see if I can show you. I don't know if you can see that. Let me uh, change 
the zoom on the camera and you can see inside. Okay, now you can see it pretty well. Move it over just a bit more and there we go. Now, see, it, it won't go any further in there. And this part here needs to mount here. And it just won't go. And so what I did is I left this in there like that and stuck my camera inside and snapped a shot and let me show you. And you can see in the shot with the camera here, the still, you can see that the front of the retract, see if I can get it out of there. This part, it hits the former. The former sits about here. And this, and there, there's a hole in the former for a retract, but it's not for this retract. So I'm gonna have to gut this former, and when I cut it out to fit this, there's no support left on the former. So what I have to do is make up a new part to attach to the former so I can cut it out and keep the structure uh, solid and let this uh, retract slide in all the way. I came up with a solution to my problem and what I did is I cut up some strips of paper and I used this Super 77 3M brand and sprayed it real light one quick swipe across the back side of the paper and laid it up on the inside of the former and here's a picture of the former and this kind of sits at the top and you, well this is actually the front side and you can see that there's several layers of paper here and I came up with the shape that I needed to uh, cover the former the whole thing as in one piece so then I took a piece of this is 132nd balsa and made a mock-up and what I did was come found I slid this in there and stuck the pencil in through the tailwheel hole and kind of drew in there the shape of the hole I needed then I enlarged it to fit the back of this Let's see if I can get it to go in there like that okay it only needs to go about this far then I took a piece of basswood you can use light ply or birch ply and uh, laid this over the top drew it out and then cut it out but on this I enlarged the hole just to give me some leeway so it didn't have to be so exact when I put the tail wheel into the fuselage which would be this way okay so that was my solution and now I need to glue this in I'll slide it into the fuselage and I'll use CA glue glue it right to that former and then I'll cut out with the Dremel tool I'll go in there and I'll cut out the excess of the old former so the tail piece of this uh, retract can go through the hole so give me a second I'm going to do that and then when it's in there I'll snap another photo of it and show you I finished putting the subformer in uh, so here's the picture and you can see it's stuck up in there there's a lot of room for the tail wheel I had needed a little wiggle room to get it up in there so I'm glad I made it oversized and I have the tail wheel screwed in there at the moment so I want to show you a complete cycle of the tail wheel why it's in there I'm gonna have to pull it out and do the cable work on the steerable tail wheel and uh, stuff like that but I'm going to put that to the side once I get it out and we're going to do the control rods for the elevators, the ball links, stuff like that and get that out of the way and then I'll come back to the tail wheel. So let me do a, a cycle on this uh, gear. It has a button in here so you can operate this manually. Okay, down and locked. Press it again, should go back up. And there you go. Couldn't resist uh, playing with it a little bit. 
So um, let me pull the tailwheel out and get all this stuff out and then we'll start on the elevator control horns, ball links, and push rods. Be back in a minute. You're looking at the contents of the bag that has the hardware for the control horns and the linkages for the elevator. Over here we have the control horn assembly, have the horn itself, the top back plate, and a three by 20 millimeter screw that goes through the elevator into the control horn. Here we have three by 12 screws that go through the control horn to hold the ball link. These are three by 12 millimeter screws with three, three millimeter washer and three millimeter nylon nut that go to the servo arm to hold the ball link. And over here is the ball link assemblies. You need to take these alum, aluminum balls and snap them into the casing to complete your uh, ball joints. And that is pretty much all there is for the hardware that we'll be working with in this little segment. So I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to show you how to snap these in and we'll get started putting this together. To put your ball link together, you'll see that one hole is smaller than the other on, on the casing for the ball link. And what I do is I take the ball and I'll set it on the larger opening and get it fairly flat, something like that. And I just take my pair of pliers, grip it and squeeze it. You hear it snaps and it's in place. And that's all there is to the ball link. Before we get into the push rods, I wanted to say something about this former back here. I don't know if they still make them with this former or if they uh, have revamped the former to fit this retract they give you. But I know that I bought mine when Tower just came out with the second generation P40. And maybe it was the first run that might had these uh, messed up formers. <laughs> and hopefully they found the problem and they corrected it by now. So that's all I wanted to say about that. All right. First thing you have to do is get out your knife, your scalpel, or your X-Acto, and cut out the holes for the, the push rod. I've done that already on the other side and I've actually installed the elevator push rod and I've installed the rudder push rod. So they're all basically the same. So if you haven't install, installed any push rods, just time is now to do that. Okay, next thing is the ball link. I already screwed it on here, I shouldn't have done that, but take this off real quick. What I do is I'll take a, me a felt marker and measure in six millimeters because the depth of the ball link is nine millimeters as far as the rod will go in. So I figure about halfway is good. That way I can make adjustments on both ends on the elevator and on the servo end. And this is the elevator side. So just screwing the ball link on about six millimeters is, is pretty good. And my mark is right about there. And what I did, I just measured in, used a Sharpie, marked it, and called it good. Okay. The next thing I do is I go to the elevator and I'll cut out the hole in the elevator, which is right up in here somewhere. You can't see it, but when I cut it out, you'll see it. So give me a second. I'm going to pop the hole in the, in the elevator. There's a spot already there for it, and uh, you'll be able to see it then. I cut the hole out on the elevator and it's a, kind of a funny shape. On the bottom it's kind of like a chevron. It's a, just a circle with two little ears on it. And uh, I kind of drew it out. It's a bad drawing, but it look, kind of looks like that, but small. And on the top is there's, there's the same shape, but you don't want to cut the whole thing out on the top. You only need to cut the circle out. So uh, just kind of keep that in your mind. You can cut it all out if you want, but it's better, I think, if you don't, because 
only the bottom part of the horn, the main part of the horn, has the two little ears that keep it from turning in the balsa wood. And this guy right here, the backing plate, does not. It just has a round hole. So you don't need to cut the whole, whole thing out, just the circle that this fits into. And let's see if I can do this without banging it around too much. This guy sits right there. Okay, there's no adjustments to this like on the rudder. It is what it is. And uh, what I'm gonna do is take the screw and the backing plate, put the screw through and screw it down. It's gonna take me a minute because it fits very tight. I'm gonna use a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench that fits the cap screw that they give you. The three by 20 millimeter. Fits that just right. So uh, let me put that together and we'll slide the push rod in. There's one thing in the manual they don't tell you and that is to install your ball link to your elevator horn on the starboard side before you put the uh, horn on the elevator. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get to the screw. The screw goes in on one side and it happens to be the side towards the fuselage. So I'm going to do that right now. I actually forgot about it and had this horn on the elevator. And uh, then I noticed that I completely forgot that I had, uh, I had to put the uh, the whole assembly together before I put it on the plane. So this is the 12 millimeter screw, and sometimes they're kind of hard to start on the horn, and I don't know why. Everything else is fairly easy to that to go together as far as uh, the screws go. There it goes. We'll tighten that one up. And I usually tighten them up till they're snug and then I get a lot of resistance. Then I'll back them off a quarter turn and they start to loosen up. This one might have to go a little bit more. There we go. That's what I like when they just kind of flop. Now I'm gonna install this onto the plane. Put the push rod in. And I need to mention, because I'm picky, number one is the only reason I'm mentioning this, is that the push rods they give you are actually terrible. The diameter is not consistent the whole length of the rod. If you look down at it, you can see it does this. So uh, they're not the best. If you can replace them, it might be a good thing to do that. But I don't have any rod that size, so I'm just going to go with what I, what they give me. And another thing is, they have a sharp bend. Well, it's fairly sharp inside the fuselage where this goes in. The reason it's there is so it clears the retract. And there's no getting around it, and it puts a little bit of... Um, can you hear that? Get the microphone. It's very tight right here. So what I found is once you get it in there... Bend your push rod just real lightly towards this end. It only has to be about right here. Because it doesn't because your elevator doesn't travel very far anyways. And once you get it to loosen up with a real slight, I mean real slight, just push all you have to do is push the push rod down once it's in there. And it gives you a proximity of the bend that you need. So I'm gonna put the bell crank in. I'm going to swap out tools here. Got everything is already over here. And like I said, getting it started is usually not difficult. As long as you're not clumsy like I am. There we go. It's just a matter of screwing it down. I'll be back in a second once I get this thing in. Finished with the linkages, they're done. Uh, there's not much else to say about them. That was the last thing. 
control rods are all in. Everything's working. Rudder, elevators. So a quick review on what we did. Installed the hinges, installed the elevators and rudder, put the ball links together, installed them on the rods, put the rods through, connected them to the horns. Uh, kind of played with the tailwheel retract and found there was a problem with the internal workings of the plane that no fault of mine, but uh, had to be fixed to get the retract inside, that former. And like I said before, I hope they fix that problem. And next is going to be putting in the servos, um, electronics for the retracts, battery packs, switches, uh, fuel tank, engine, and let's see. And I'll show you how I work my choke mechanism on a on DLE 35. And. Uh, that will be just about it for the next video. Just mainly dealing with the inside of the, the plane and we'll hopefully wrap it up in one more video. But to end this video, I'm going to bring out the servos I'm gonna use on the inside of this plane and lay them out and show you what, I, what I'm gonna use. So I'll be back in a minute. I believe I talked about these servos in part one when we were doing the wings. And these are high-tech HS645 MGs. They're an analog servo. I don't need digital on a sport plane. I'm not going to do any kind of precision aerobatics or anything like that. Uh, the torque specs on this at 4.8 volts, it's 107 ounce inches of torque. And at uh, 6 volts, it's 133 ounce inches of torque. Plenty of power to, to fly this model. And it operates on 4.8 or 6 volts, just like I basically said. And it comes with a bunch of little accessories here. And uh, so I guess I'll zoom in on this and we'll talk a little bit about what's in the box. In your little bag here that it comes with is your accessories. And you get one large wheel, one red T. And in one direction it has four holes in the arm. And going the other way it has three holes. I don't know why that is, but that's the way they made it have a, a large uh, dual arm and on the servo itself has a small single arm you get a small standard size uh, circular arm and you get four rubber grommets the four brass inserts and four screws just to clarify something uh, next video the first thing I'm gonna start with is a tail wheel so if you're interested in that, I didn't mention it before, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that the first thing we're going to jump into is finishing up the tail wheel and the, and the tail wheel gear doors. That'll be kind of fun. So that should do it. It's a wrap on this uh, part three. I'll see you in part four. Have a good one.